Hi everyone, welcome back to another camera channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about this two rack unit graphics package for your ATEM Mini or ATEM Mini Extreme. First off, thanks for clicking on the video, I really appreciate it. Uh, I, today, I'm gonna to be talking about this graphics package that I've been making, and I really wanted to make this video actually a few months ago, but I've been very, very busy with work, and I was trying to plan on finishing the build before making this video, but, I haven't quite finished it yet, and I thought if I didn't make this video now, I'm probably never gonna make it. And I am actually playing some upgrades to this very soon, which we'll find out more at the end of the video. So let's talk about the case. This is an SKB two rack case. Um, it's made out of plastic, it's very lightweight, but with all the stuff inside it, it is a little bit heavier now. Uh, it's definitely not as heavy as my 4K streaming rig, and if you haven't seen that video, you can go check it out up here. So yeah, pretty good case, it's lightweight as I mentioned, so let me show you what is on the inside. So first off, what's in the box and what kind of graphics can it do? Well, I'm talking about key and fill graphics, and these can be nearly anything you want. It's usually the output of a program like OBS, vMix, or HTR graphics, or a mixture of all of those things together. So I'm talking about like lower thirds, logos, stingers, transitions, anything that may need transparency uh, to go over your image. We're using key and fill graphics for that. And for key and fill graphics, you need two inputs on your ATEM Mini or ATEM Mini Extreme, and you're gonna use a downstream keyer with the fill being the images that have been shown and the key being a black and white version of that with white being the information that's been shown and black being transparent and anything in the grayscale region being in between those two ranges. So what kind of equipment do we need to achieve this? Well, in the box I have a Blackmagic Ultra Studio 4K Mini and that gives us the key and fill signals over SDI. How am I generating these key and fill signals? Well, I have a Mac Mini M1 in this section right here and that is using OBS with the deck link output to generate those key and fill signals. Now for the actual graphics that I'm using, I have a mixture of H2R graphics, which is a really nice program if you need very quick lower thirds, if you want images coming on, new transitions, and John Barker, the person who actually makes this, he is developing it constantly and there's always new features, so I definitely recommend checking that out. Other things in OBS, I have multiple scenes with different logos, I have stinger transitions, and I also use it for on-screen chat messages and super chats and things like that and H2R graphics and the chat overlays come in as browser inputs inside OBS. So, so far, if you looked at a technical kind of workflow of how this all works at the moment, we have our Mac Mini M1, which is running OBS and H2R graphics. That's connected to the Ultra Studio 4K Mini using one of those Apple Thunderbolt expensive cables, and that in turn is outputting key and fill signals over SDI. So how do we get the SDI signals to get into our ATEM Mini or ATEM Mini Extreme? Well, we need two Blackmagic Mini converters, SDI to HDMI, and you can use the 3G versions since we're only dealing with an HD signal here. If we were doing 4K, you could use the 12G versions, but that's not necessary as the ATEM Mini and ATEM Mini Extremes have a maximum output of HD anyway. So it would just kind of be overkill. And so going back to the diagram, we have two HDMI cables from the SDI to HDMI converters going into our ATEM Mini or ATEM Mini Extreme. And in our ATEM, we're using a downstream key, and these are the settings that you're gonna want. Pre-multiplied turned off with threshold at 50% and gain at 12.5%. These are the settings that have worked for me. It took a long time to actually find out the right settings. I found that a lot of other people on YouTube just kinda say, play with the settings and find out what works best. But I'm pretty sure these will work for everyone. So try these first, if it doesn't work, then try fiddling with the settings to see if you can get a cleaner image. But to me, I tried it using gradients and everything, lots of different types of graphics and different moving objects and things like that. And 50% threshold and 12.5% gain worked the best for me. So going back to what's in the box, you'll see that I have this panel here with some USBs. So two USB-Cs here and two USB-As here. And these are connected to the Mac Mini M1. One of these is connected to the Mac Mini M1, and this one actually connects to the back of the Ultra Studio, um, which feeds back into the Mac Mini M1. So I haven't lost any ports by using the Ultra Studio 4K Mini here, uh, which is really, really good. This allows me to plug in things like SSDs or keyboard and mouse if that is required. Now let's look on the back. Now you're gonna see the reason why I didn't end up making the video. It's because I have to deal with all of these cables, which are gonna fall out onto the table. There we go. 
So basically, uh, at the moment, I'm powering, like, I need three power cables at the moment, one for the Ultra Studio 4K Mini, one for the Mac Mini M1, and another for, like, a USB hub, which power the SCI to HDMI converters. And I was going to put, like, a sm very small power bar on the inside of the case, and I had another one of those brush panels which I was going to run a power cable through. And that was the sticking point for me. I hadn't worked out how to get the power cable through the brush panel without having to cut and reconnect the cable together. Um, so that's why I hadn't made the video. Uh, so at the moment, the cables kind of just lie down like this, but in the future, they won't. What else is here? I have Ethernet or Ethernet going to the Mac Mini M1, even though um, I do control it sometimes over Wi-Fi as well. It's good to have a nice hardwired Ethernet connection there. We have our two HDMI outs for the SDI to HDMI converter. So one is going to be key, and it's key here, and the fill is here. And then we have the Mac Mini M1 display out here. And over here, we have four SDIs. And you're probably wondering why I've done this. Originally, when I first started using this system, when it wasn't in this case, you can sometimes get like weird timing issues with the SDI to HDMI converters. Well, they'll kind of be offset horizontally. And the way I figured out how to fix it was to disconnect and reconnect SCI cables. I thought that was the only way to do it at the time. It also works just disconnecting and reconnecting the HDMI cables. So I kind of built this in as redundancy um, for a way of being able to fix and troubleshoot those things. And I also had the idea of if I was gonna go into an SDI workflow in the future, I could disconnect these patch cables here and run directly from the Ultra Studio 4K Mini to um, an SDI switch of some kind. And I would still have the two SDIs going to the SDI to HDMI converters inside the box. And that seemed like a good idea at the time, but due to the advent of some new technology, I'm talking one of these, um, I've planned to change my workflow and change what's in this box. Uh, so this is the video of how this would work really well for an A10 Mini or A10 Mini Extreme uh, if you need HDMI outputs. I'm actually gonna change this up if you saw my 4K streaming rig video. I'm gonna plug it again one more time just in case you haven't seen it. I have two Apple TVs and Playout B. I'm taking them out of the main box and I'm gonna put them in here. And basically over here, I'm gonna have more HDMIs or well, I'm gonna move the two HDMIs from here over to here, add two more HDMIs, and put two of the SDIs here, and that will be the 4K Ultra Studio 4K mini output for Keen Fill. So I'm gonna still keep it as a graphics box, but over here will be like the four, uh, Apple TV 4K Apple TV, uh, Playout B, and then I'll probably move the Mac Mini M1 output to over here, and then this one will be like the Ultra Studio HDMI output as it has a HDMI output of its own. And why would that be useful? Well, the Ultra Studio 4K Mini is actually a really great output box for things like DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. Apparently, it gives much better and accurate color um, out of the HDMI. So that's a plus. So if I wanted to have like a mobile grading station, I guess maybe a DIT kind of setup, uh, then this would work pretty well. Now, you're probably wondering, where's the screen? How would I view anything that's going on inside the box. Well, obviously you can plug in an external monitor to this, but that's why I actually have this uh, MacBook on the table. It's because most of the time, I don't have a screen plugged into this. I'm just using Apple Remote Desktop, remote desktoping into um, the Mac Mini N1 to make any changes to the graphics. But the way I have it set up is that as soon as I log in, everything starts up by itself. Uh, so H2R graphics starts, OBS starts, and it starts outputting over through the Ultra Studio 4K Mini automatically. And because I'm controlling this over Companion, using HDR graphics, turning things on and off, or switching between scenes in OBS, I don't really have to do much on the M1 Mini unless I'm changing graphics. But for some of my weekly projects I have, I don't have to change them. So uh, pretty convenient, just remote desktop, you can control pretty much everything you need to over that. So yeah, that's it for this small two rack unit graphics package for A10 Minis and A10 Mini Extremes. I uh, hope you liked it. I will be doing an update video once I get you know the Apple TVs and Playout B inside it and I have my 2ME constellation that's HD up and running. I'm in the, I'm in the process of disassembling and reassembling my uh, streaming rig box. I had to buy so many uh, HDMI to SDI converters, uh, it's crazy. And I also need some more for the other way around as well. Um, so stay posted for that video, it will be out quite soon. I may post a first impressions video um, because I have been using it and got it to work. Um, just not everything is 
completely ready to go just yet. But it will be soon. So if you want to see that video, please like this video and leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Any questions, let me know. I'll be very happy to answer them. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.